You are live. How do we start at 144 on our live? How is that even possible? I don't know. It says on our clock that we went live at 145. Or we have been live for a minute and 44 seconds by the time we started. Maybe Angel started before we got on here. I'm down for that. Maggie said she felt sleepy and I've been going through the ringer with my body so we're sitting here and we're getting ready to go live with you guys and I'm just and we're just sitting here and I'm like okay happy 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 energy 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 yay god that's literally what she was doing to hype herself up for this hi Connie so you know the drill let us know that you can hear us. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. Hi, Brenda. Let us know that you can hear us loud and clear. That was not a crackling or like I think I finally got into the bottom of that. It was that little device, wasn't it? It was a little device. Yeah. I finally found out what it was. Because we haven't had issues since we got rid of that. Yeah. Wow. There's an AC going in the room. If that noise is too much we can turn it off we'd rather not because it'll get hot but we do want you guys to hear yeah. us so well, let us know too quiet here let me see let me see how loud we are on the board here are we loud enough guys hi beatrice connie says yes to hearing and seeing you well, that is good to be seen. And her Sarah, Sarah says, says yes. Sarah said we're loud enough. Okay. Simon says, <laughs> be confident in the Lord during your life. Amen. Say okay. Hi, Donna. Right. Yay, God. I'm was determined to make my life today. My body has been not in the shape where you would go live. So I'm kind of on some drug medication right now that I can go live. But God's going to do it. Yes, he is. I've done it a hundred times before with the power of the Lord. And I'm going to do it again. Amen. And Satan can just put that in his pipe and smoke it. Sounds like a plan to me. Good plan. Good plan. That's, Sarah just said, when you're feeling weak, God is strong. That is exactly what Kath prayed about five minutes ago. Yeah, I said, God, Paul said that he gloried in his weaknesses because it was so amazing when the power of God would come on him in, in his weaknesses. That's how awesome it was. So I'm like, hey, God, that kind of power, that's what I'm asking for. So we should pray. And then we should dive right straight into the deep end, right to the bottom of the pool. Sounds good to me. And stay there until all the bubbles stop. And then we'll come up poor enough to get born again. Do you remember Tony Fraze always said that you know someone's born again if you baptize them and keep them under till the bubbles stop? <laughs> oh, oh, you know the old man's dead then. Oh, that's so hilarious. Hi, Donna. Hi, Mary. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Janelle. Hey, you're from California. Yeah, you guys should put where you're from. It's kind of cool. Excuse my scratchy voice. It's kind of cool to see where people are from. I'm guessing it's a lot hotter in California than it is here. She'd probably laugh at us for our AC. This is in California, a hot place. They do have mountains and winter. I, I'm, I've never been there, but I plan to go there. I've told God in the next two years I want to go to California. Mm. I have a specific place in mind, but I won't share that just yet. It's a secret, is it? It is for the moment. Yeah. Hi, Colleen. Well. Well, let's do let's do her. All right, let's do her. She actually Okay, we're going to pray together and then we're going to let Maggie loose on the Hebrew calendar. She feels I'm very prepared and she is super on fire for it. She's got all her guns blazing. 
Yes. All systems, all systems are a goal. All systems are we're a goal. Call, we're calling things that are not as though they were. You know, Holy Spirit is a goal. So that's all that matters, right? Doesn't matter how we feel or what we might think. No, we can still do it. It's inconsequential. Alrighty. Amen. Okay, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure the Holy Spirit was saying, uh, just sit back and let me do the talking. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and speak through Maggie and my m mouth. Yes. Sh show us what, what to focus on in our notes what you really want highlighted and shared. And may, may it come out as a living, breathing, two-edged, sharp sword. Yes. And I pray that you would meet every single person on this live right now, Lord. Every single one. And every single one on the replay, even if it's years from now, someone watches this on the replay, that you would meet them in a powerful way. You are a good God. You go to the point I'm mentioning that by the way I happen to know how many hairs you have in your head you are into our details you because you love us to yes. the core you love us to the bits so I thank you for that God I thank you that we figured out what's wrong with the computer that we have good sound now I plead the blood of Jesus over all the technology that's needed tonight or over the internet connection I pray the blood of Jesus over my body, and I yes. command my tremors to come under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. You bow, tremors, the source of you. You bow to the name of Jesus. You know that name. You know that name, tremors. You know that name. Get on your knees and bow. Get out. Get out, a nervous system. Be built up and de-strengthened. Peace come into my body. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And I thank you, Lord, that everybody on this live will be touched in a special way, God. I pray for eyes to eyes to hear. That'd be hard. Eyes to see. And ears to hear. And ears to hear. And a heart that is good soil. Yes. So come and do what you want to do, Yahweh. Yes. Blow your ruach breath over this live. And do what only you can do. Amen. Amen. I was thinking the same thing, just that Holy Spirit completely take over and work through us. I actually had very high expectations about this whole afternoon when I was preparing for this, that this um, would be one where the Holy Spirit would take over because I knew you'd had a rough week and we, we want that. That's so much better than us doing that. So we just completely come into partnership with you right now, Holy Spirit, and surrender this live to you. We surrender all spiritual and technical connections right now to you so that it is you working through us. We don't want this to be um, anything about us. We don't want this to be a show, so to speak. We just want to share you and to share what you have for all of us, for everyone on this live, including for Kath and for myself, in Jesus' name. Come out of our mouth as pure yes. the rivers of living water. Yes. Pure life. Amen. 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 Amen.
Shall I dive into the Hebrew month of Sivan? Yes, we are well into Sivan, unfortunately. We are a little ways in. Um, but that's okay. Yes, we've had a few delays on this live. We would have yes, been on a while ago. But here we are. We're on now on Sivan 22nd, June 11th. I was wondering if there was some significance to that. 1122. <laughs> I have to think about that. It's fascinating. Um, so the month we're in right now is the month of Sivan. We're on Sivan 22nd right now. And the theme for this month, this is considered to be the month of extravagant provision. Praise God. Now, not that's not just barely enough provision. It's extravagant provision. Is the camel joining us for a live? He's just chilling there. There we go. I got this as a birthday present, and this is what Maggie is talking about. Yes. In fact, this is the third month of the he of the spiritual year on the Hebrew calendar, and the th number three. Um, the letter Gamel has the value of three, and Gamel is a picture of a camel, basically, mm -hmm. and th that's kind of the reason this is the month of provision so to speak really i do not know that it's my understanding i think that's what i'm going with that sounds good to me because the, the word savan does not actually mean provision it means um bright their covering like their covering was bright oh. which reminded me of when moses was in the god's glory yes and he glowed and i'm totally totally good with that this month or on this live at any time. Well, I don't think I have ever heard the prophets, including myself, getting messages about the glory of God coming. Mm -hmm. every, I, every prophet I've been listening to, it's the glory of God, it's the glory mm -hmm. of God, it's the glory of God. And that's how Moses encountered it. Yeah. It was so strong on him. They said, can you please put a hat on? We can't take it. Like a lampshade. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not do that when the glory of God no, comes. No, no, let's not do that. Let's definitely not do that. So we're in the year 5783, the three there representing the camel. And we're in the third month right now, also representing the camel. So this is almost like a double whammy of provision. And I love <clears throat> that it uses the words extravagant provision. Extravagant. Extravagant. That's not just barely enough. Extravagant means far above and beyond, over the top, more than just the basic needs. That makes me so happy to hear you say that because I've been feeling that coming on for the last two months. I had no calendar to go by, but I've been feeling it. I've been feeling it. And I've actually been experiencing it in May. It started, it started changing. Really? Yes. Extravagant provision like finances coming from the most unexpected places and gifts and gifts and gifts, which was my report for me. That's amazing. Yeah, so well, that makes me so happy that you say that. On the, on, the, on the Hebrew calendar right now, this month, we're perfectly aligned for provision, like very, very much. Um, I'm going to go a little bit ahead in my notes now, but they, Christine Vallis mentioned this in her video about Savan. She said this is kind of a very good month to read the Book of Ruth. Okay. One of the... One of the the book of Ruth takes place between the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. That means much of it takes place right now. And one of the things um, about this extravagant provision, like it's the wheat harvest right now, and what God commanded his people to do was take what you need, but leave some behind for someone else. He very much stressed the importance of giving. And you perfectly see that theme in the book of Ruth. In fact, that the book of Ruth, most of it takes place in this current timeline of the Hebrew calendar where we're at right now. Wow. Yeah. So two months ago in the month of Nisan was Passover. And then they, from the barley harvest, they start counting the Omer. And then 50 days from then is Nisan. The month of Ayar is considered the transition or kind of the, the middle month between Passover and per, to, into provision going into supernatural provision, extravagant provision, as it says. I'm in. I'm in too. I'm good with that. And one, 
I found this very interesting. The word provision, it actually means to supply in advance. That means we're walking into things that have been supplied in advance. We don't have to be looking for it now because God has gone before us and supplied it in advance. That's what provision means, to supply in advance. I also got that from Christine Vallis. She has some very good things. I love that. Um, some very important things that were provided this month. If you read Exodus 19 and 20, I believe it is, it's when Moses goes to, uh, to Mount Sinai, God's glory, God's glory manifests there, and they get and the Torah is given. So that is a, the covenant they were provided in the month of Sivan. That's huge. It is huge. And I think it isn't that the first like manifestation to that degree mm -hmm. of God himself. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. And if you read Acts chapter 2, which I'm sure we're all very familiar with, um, that's when the Holy Spirit was given. And again, Sivan. It happens in the month of Sivan. So major life-altering, history-making yes. things were released from him and from God's heart to us in, Sivan. in this month. Yes. That's huge. It's a very... Very big. Um, the tribe for this month is Zebulun. And Zebulun, they were considered uh, the businessmen of Israel. They were the, their land was by a seaport, so they were huge traders, like they traded. Um, there was much export and import, things like that. So they were, my understanding of it from research that I did, it's almost as though they had a very strong Joseph anointing. Ooh, I like that. So it's the year of Joseph. It is the year of Joseph. And because when you think about it, like they were so business minded, it, it does sound like a Joseph thing. And they were a tribe known for their, for wealth, so to speak. Like financial provision, not just all the other provisions. That's I knew too. this was coming. I knew it. I knew it. You didn't know this? No. Oh. I, I knew that Savannah was the month of the businessman, but God. The, but that's about all I knew about it. So I'm, so, I'm really glad we don't compare notes too much. But I just knew that wealth wealth is coming. Wealth is coming. I mean, you know what, you guys? Here's a little tip. If you're not sure exactly what God is saying, then check what Satan is saying and flip it. That is a good tip. It works. The economy is crashing. You know, where there's going to be enough, no food. There's going to be no money. There's going to be no nothing. There's going to be... Then you can say, oh, okay, so God's getting ready to pour out his, pour out his provision on us. That's right. It's, an, it's, a, it's a nice, uh, it's a hack. It's a life a, hack? A spiritual life hack. Just to flip it on him. Because he always goes against what God is doing. And I love what Andrew Wallach says. He says, we don't do recessions. I was like, and people are like, you can't do that. And he's like, yes, I can. We just don't do recessions. Heaven doesn't have a recession. We don't have. When they had a huge mortgage um, recession in the states years ago, and the churches were closing their doors mm -hmm. left, right, and center because they were just couldn't make ends meet and they were just collapsing financially. Andrew Wamak Ministries decided to give more money than they had ever given before, and give more free teaching than they had ever given before, and they made way more money that year than they had ever made before. I absolutely love that testimony. I've heard it before, and it's so, so good. It's it's 100% proof that just because the world is screaming this, we can walk in the complete opposite at the same time. Well, it asks you, it actually puts it in your face and asks you, who is your source? Yes. Your job or God? Who is your economy? This world or the kingdom of heaven? There's a big difference. It really puts you in puts that right in your face. I, I like it when God puts stuff right in my face. It's much easier to see that. Yes. <laughs> Put it right up here and make me deal with the Lord. Even though it is uncomfortable at times, it's good for us to but go through that. it sets you free. It does. When God is your source, what does it, what is what is recession? And God is my source. There's no recession there. There's no shortage in heaven. There's no lack there. And that's where I'm seated. It's a much better perspective than the one down here that the world screams at us. Amen. Way better. I'm myself happy. It's working. 
you know my scratchy throat <laughs> walking around one of the scriptures i discovered that perfectly lines up with this is second corinthians 9 10 and 11 and god who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating will also provide and multiple multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness which manifests itself in active goodness kindness and charity thus you will be enriched in all things and in every way every way all things so that you can be generous and your generosity as it is administered by us will bring forth thanksgiving to god we're not just supposed to have be well provided for so that we can have lots we're supposed to be well provided for so that we can give lots that's that's, that's the that's the goal that's the nutshell we want to be able to live in a place where we can be generous and be giving and help others because if we have barely enough we can't do that if we're no. just getting by we can't do that and god wants us to be able to give and help others so therefore he wants us to have more than we need so that there is room to give and sometimes it takes that um that test so to speak where sometimes when it's uncomfortable to give and you feel like but but God, I barely have enough. I know I was in a spot like that once where I felt like that. And he so convicted me in a very good way that Maggie, trust me, just give, I've got you. And he always comes through, always. That's awesome. Always. Hey, can you read, can you open that again for your? Sure. There's a certain scripture that I was eyeing right through, right through the same passage you were. And that's the one God's been highlighting to me. And you say, before I knew that we were entering into a month of provision, and he's been saying, stand on this. Verse 8, it is powerful. Read it slow so it sinks into our heads. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need the need be self whatever the need be self sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation mic drop that is incredible i heard that whole thing in michelle texas voice you me too i heard her <laughs> yelling abundance top of her voice 100 but listen to that that's what we've been standing on and god mm -hmm. is able to make all grace god's yep. grace and and then god's grace and then yet all of it every favor and every favor and every earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances there's a lot of alls in here yes it covers everything yes and whatever the need whatever the need be self-sufficient and that in the greek means independently wealthy god is not against money you having money he's against money having you there's a difference yes you he, he what was i going to say it went right off the train in my track in my head but I'll just repeat that. God is not against us having money. He's against money having mm -hmm. us. Because we need finances to bring God's kingdom down to earth. That's right. The gospel is free, but the pipe that sends it isn't. You're quoting someone there, aren't you? Andrew Wammer. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> so I love that. We, so I've been standing on that ever since God's been telling me that it's the finances are coming, the camels are coming, they're coming, you're going to start seeing it. And he's been saying stand on that scripture so i've been standing on that scripture mm -hmm. and it says that you will you will whatever the whatever whatever the need be self-sufficient possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance so you you yourselves are so richly abundant that you have no need of anything so that you can give richly to others i had a guy in jail once come to me and I had said something about that in something I had preached. And he said to me that that he didn't agree with that. All he needed was his needs taken care of. He wasn't going to ask God for more than that. He was satisfied. He, 
And I said, well, you know, that sounds pretty holy, but it's really pretty selfish. It is pretty selfish when you think about it. Because if you just have enough to have your own needs met, then you you are unable to think of others in the way that you could if you had more. You are unable to help God furnish his kingdom. Mm -hmm. You are unable to bless people. I mean, there's other ways to bless people than money, but money is a huge part of it. Yeah. So this would be what I'm gathering from what you're saying, maybe is this is an awesome month to make sure your heart is positioned to prosper. That is a very, very good way to put it. Can I close this now? Yes. All right. I like that position to prosper. Yes. This is honestly like one of the things that when I was watching Christine Vallis's video, she said she stressed the importance of of God made sure that they were aware. You take what you what you need, but always give to others that need. Always. And in, in whatever way, whether it's um financial provision or food in any way. Another thing that I discovered thanks to Iris, I'm not sure if Iris is on here, I haven't seen her, but I phoned her this morning and she had found something really interesting about Zebulun that I thought was very much worth bringing up here. Wow, I have many, okay, there we go. This is something that um, a friend of mine saw on Facebook and uh, a pastor from Winnipeg, I believe, possibly, I don't know for sure, yeah. posted this. And she thought it was really interesting because she knew that was the what we were talking about tonight. So I'll just read his post exactly. This is posted by Raymond McLean. Um, while preparing this message, God revealed this before this before I had recorded and I had recorded but totally forgotten about until today. The month in the biblical calendar today is Savan. And Holy Spirit has been prompting me to share this message on the bride since last week. And I didn't realize, even realize what that this month was all about. Even now, even more excited. The month of Savan is the month of dowry. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Zebulun, the bride price. While the month of the bride is in the month of Elul, the bride month in Song of Songs. Genesis 30, verse 20. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry, and now, now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. Wow. And Genesis 49, 13, that's the blessing of Zebulun. And Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for, for a, haven, a haven for ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. So this is very mu much, Zebulun symbolized wealth. It symbolized dowry. That's that's provision. A, that's, a dowry is what a bride would receive from, that would be passed down, like her, it's what she would receive as a wedding gift for her marriage, basically. And it would be a provision of many things, wow. including finances. That's so I think- In this month with Zebulun. Yes. So I think wow. one of the, the ways that God wants, we're his bride. We are his bride. We are his bride. The, the provision is our dowry. That's amazing. Isn't that I cool? love that. I thought that was really cool. And one of the things, this was this is just my own thought here. Um, so Zebulun, they, li they lived by the sea. So um, their symbol was actually a ship. They did a lot of shipping and things like that. And I thought of it yes yesterday when we were talking about when you mentioned that Canada will turn on a dime word. Yeah. And part of that is the wind will the the ship will turn, the wind will fill her sails and be at her back. Mm -hmm. Now, when a ship ship has sails and they're full of wind, there is no trying to get that that ship moving. It happens with ease. It is like I said about provision. It is something that is provided ahead of time it doesn't it's not something you have to fight for or work for a ship sails with ease and i think this is the month to find the strategy it's considered the businessman month oh, and like to position that. our hearts our sail so that it can be filled with the spirit and he will sail us into it not by our own strength but him doing it into prosperous waters yes into prosperous waters and whatever that whatever these prosperous waters are that you need in your life, they're different for each of us, but God wants you to sail into that. 
and he doesn't want you to have to fight for it and work for it and and get stressed for it or have anxiety over trying to get it he doesn't want any of that he wants to just sail fill you with his wind and sail you into it see we had a message a couple saturdays ago at church that really rocked people's boats i did a little bit didn't it and you mm -hmm. could feel that the cat was getting the fur rubbed the wrong way in the room the religious cat not me <laughs> You could feel it. And yeah. I actually said it out loud. You did. There's some religious bones creaking in this place. And what we talked about is we're changing up the way we do our offering and we're making it part of our worship because too long it's been part of a duty. And it says God loves a cheerful giver. And it says, God, you should give as you have determined in your heart that, that what you want to give. He has a cheerful giver, not one who gives under compulsion, is what the Amplified says. So we were digging into that, and God, the Holy Spirit just really started speaking and started challenging on us on our on our giving. And I think for too long we've seen our job as our source and ourselves as our source. And if you are your source, then you have to keep yourself employed and you have to keep yourself healthy enough to go to work and you have to keep yourself make sure all your bills paid and you and you and you and you and you and strive and strive and strive and it's on you and if there's recession or someone steals from you it's oh, who's who's going to fix it you have to but when god's your source and you don't have to worry about fixing it you don't have to worry about any of that because he even he, he even comes with theft protection he says the enemy has to yes. pay back some times in fact, I accidentally changed my phone screen to this. The Lord is giving you the opportunity to receive a double payment for your for your double trouble. Amen. A double repayment. Amen. I had my accident a few days ago. I love your accidents. It was a good accident. So there's a shift happening in the body of Christ mm -hmm. re regarding how we think about wealth. You know. I was recently listening to a teaching and um, this person was talking about how there needs to be, there should never, there should nowhere in your life be a line where this is, this part of your life is sacred and this part of your life is, is secular. There should be no line like that. He said too many people, they see their jobs like that. Um, they see their job as their secular life and then they want, and the ministry would be their sacred life you know yeah he said there should be no distinction between the two it should all be one your whole life every area of your life should be sacred and i think honestly that's part of the key of, of um getting over that dumb mindset of your job being your source yeah that's a then it's a big one to get over it is a big one to get over because once you see your job as part of your your entire sacred life and it all becomes one you won't keep thinking of your job as oh okay this is my job this is you know this is what i have to do it's just you're obligated to do it if you see your job as a place Whoa, where you can shine jesus shift. light and make a difference there and shift, shift, and suddenly shift. there is no line anymore between your sacred life and your secular life and it'll help completely change your mindset about your finances and what you what your source really is just let your heart shift while Maggie's sharing. I can just see a, a shifting gear in a, in a car that's not automatic. You know, I feel like to a large extent I've experienced this. Because I've, I've worked jobs where it was just a job and I didn't enjoy it. Mm. But then, through a strange series of circumstances, I ended up getting a job and... If the income was less than half of what my previous job had been. Mm -hmm. So I was in a spot where I really had to to learn that because suddenly I had my income was cut in half, more than that. It was it was I was it was less than half of what I was getting previously. And I really had to work with myself many times about my mind mindset about finances and how I saw my job. And that honestly, it was in that job where it became so much more about the, than just the job and, and my paycheck, because honestly, the paycheck didn't even cover my bills all the time. But it became about the difference I could make there 
of the pe- the relationships I could build with the people. And after that, like I have never seen work quite the same way. Because we, it's, it's not right thinking. It is not biblical thinking to just think of your job as your way to pay your bills. No. Every area of, of your life. That is part of the curse. That is part of the curse. It's the toiling. Yeah. We don't want to be toiling our whole lives. Oh, Jesus. Every area of our life, no matter what it is, our goal are, is to just shine Jesus, to love people. Every area of our life is sacred, and this is what we're supposed to do. And if we walk in this, you will get favor in your job, in your workplace. You will have favor in every other area of your life. Your finances will start reflecting that. So yeah. I think the key there is to see that not um, your job is not a bad thing. It's an opportunity for you to make a difference in a whole, in whatever your workplace is, whether it's a company, it's a restaurant, whether it's, doesn't matter what it is. It's an opportunity to, to cause revival to happen there and to change people's lives. One of my friends said the other day, my job, she said, I've learned it's not my income. It's my assignment. It is your assignment. That is your ministry, so to speak, if you want to call it that. Yeah. It's your, yeah. So good. Wow, so good. That wasn't in your notes, was it, Maggie? Definitely not. I like it when Holy Spirit gets out his notes. They're much better than mine. Mine are just random sentences and, and uh, point form notes. So, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give us the grace to shift into what you are speaking through Maggie's mouth, to shift into giving for a living instead of living for a giving. That'll preach. And I pray that you would help us shift into that. You are our source, God. We have mm-hmm. nothing to worry about. And and help us to be real with ourselves. Where are we at in that? Are you our source? Or is our job still our source? So God, just with, with your grace, Lord, with the grace of the Holy Spirit, help us to make that shift, the body of Christ, to make that shift and step and position our hearts to prosper. And like Maggie said so beautifully, to set the sails of our spirits to catch the wind of that mm-hmm. prosperous point. A prosperous wind that wants to blow us into new waters. We've been in these striving waters where we're in a canoe paddling and paddling and paddling way too long. It's time to get into the sailboat, Lord. Yes. So help us do it. I've been reminded of the scripture not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So that I pray, God, that you would help the body, the body of Christ to make us to help us make that shift mm-hmm. because that takes all the pressure off yes and it takes care of a lot of fear and anxiety and worry is that yes. isn't it amazing mm-hmm. while you were praying i was thinking um it's not whatever area that we have lack in those are the waters he wants to sail us into whether if you're lacking in joy he wants to sail you in a, into an abundance of joy where you're lacking in peace, he wants to sail you into peace, like abundance in all things, joy, peace, love. Bring it on. Even, I'm not sure how to put this one into words, but um, even what we think of ourselves or even what we think our Mm. worth might be, it's abundantly more than many of us realize. And he wants to sail us into this abundance in all areas of our life. I once heard it said, would you, would you speak to your best friend the way you speak to yourself in your head? That's a hard one to swallow, isn't it? Yeah, I was just quiet like that. Oh, my goodness. Because if you cannot love your neighbor as you... Love yourself. So in order for me to love you, I have to actually know how to love me. Yeah you can't give away what you don't have and i would not ever like many of the things that i know i've said to myself or thought about myself i would never say that about cap because it's not even true so chances are those thoughts that you would not say to your best friend they're just lies they're not even true about yourself 
even if they were true, you wouldn't say it to me because love covers a multitude of sins. This is true. So there's there's much grace to be had in this season that we're in, in this mm -hmm. era that we're in. So much grace. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I like where this is going. It took an unexpected turn. It must have been the sales. It must have been the sales. <laughs> Okay, is that, is that everything you have, Maggie? I think, yeah, that's it. And then some. And then some. That was awesome. Yeah, Thank that you, was the Lord. extravagant part. Abundant provision. <laughs> extravagant provision. The, above and beyond what I had planned for. Well, I just trusted it. Remember, because I can feel the anointing when you're speaking. So I trusted that seed goes into our heart and produces a harvest. Mm -hmm. And the harvest is coming up quickly. It's not the natural way that you have to wait months and months and months to harvest. They were at such scripture where the reapers are overtaking the sowers. Yes. I don't know the reference, but yeah, for a quick harvest of these anointed words that you're giving to us, Lord. All right, so Maggie's covered Savan. So I will try and cover June here. I have a whole list of things, and I don't know which ones I'm supposed to supposed to say and which ones I'm not supposed to say you know they say never they say well I guess they say it's baby prophets or beginning prophets which I guess I am a bit of, I'm a bit of a beginner I would consider myself and they say never to say dates nate mates or whatever what are the three things dates mates and babies yeah and names or something or like that and that's everything that I'm going to say today I'm bringing all the prophetic rules and sharing in the dream. All right. I, I don't know where you're going with this. So I'm excited. So I'm bringing this dream before what I'm assuming is a mature bunch of people that can know how to take a dream before God and ask for clarity. Because I myself don't have 100% clarity, but I feel to release it. All right, the dream began, it had a couple of scenes. It began in a huge hall of sorts, like a, a wedding where you'd have a wedding or something or a banquet hall or something. A huge hall, very plain, don't really remember much of it, but that's where we were. And there were Christians of every denomination mulling around there. And someone was getting married. And I knew that the groom's name was Matt. And I wanted to get married to him so bad, but I knew I wasn't, I wasn't his bride. He was, it, wasn't, it wasn't for me. And at the last second, he decided, no, I'm not marrying her. I'm marrying Catherine. I'm marrying me. And I was like, oh. I felt like all my dreams came true. It was, I was like overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like the most loved person in the world and that, that he chose me. I'm just, I'll, I'll explain, just stick with me. This is what happened. So he decides at the last minute, he's going to marry me. And the scene changes, and I'm at the Olympics, the, win the Winter Olympics. And it gets weirder. I'm pregnant. I guess it makes sense. I just got married. And my mom is there with me. There is a birthing and a labor room at the Olympics. And I'm ready to have this baby, and I give birth to this baby painlessly. And the, and the baby is mature enough to talk and understand what I'm saying. God, I hope you're just giving revelation to people that are listening. Because I have so much revelation coming to me as I'm sharing. And I said to the baby, I said, do you know what your name is? And I knew it was super important what her name was. And I wanted her to know the weight it carried. And she said, no, I don't. And I said, your name is Riley Bryn. And I will explain that too. And um, then the scene changed. We were still at the Olympics, but it was winding down and it was like everybody was going, oh, no, the scene changed. I, I, I skipped the scene. The scene changed and I saw a lady at the Olympics. Her name was Michelle and she had her head down and she was super disappointed and super bummed out because she had not made the cut. She had lost. Then the scene changed, and it, it was seemed as if the Olympics were over and people were just leaving and going home. But 
our church, my church family, we were like, no, we are not leaving until the, the announcements are over. We are not leaving until the last thing is done. It was very important to us. We are not going anywhere. And also, we were just standing there waiting. The bleachers were all empty, and we were just standing there waiting, and we are not going anywhere. No way. We're not missing it. Something, we knew something good is coming. We are pretty determined like that. We are pretty determined like that. And also, over the loudspeakers, they announced, the big announcement was that the Canadian goalie had won the Olympics. I don't know how that's possible, but he had won the Olympics, and he came, and the place, I don't know how the place erupted because we were the only ones left there, but the place just went wild, and we were screaming and jumping and cheering, and he came skating onto the ice. There was confetti flying everywhere. He had all his goalie gear on, his pads on, and we were like, yes! And then a man from our church, he turned around to, to me and he said, and my mom said, at first my mom said, now we can see, now we can really say to people, look, God is good. And I knew that she meant, see, he did what he said he'd do. And then another man from our church commented, and now Canada is completely underwater. And then I woke up. Whoa. So for me, that is a like a big. It's a pretty jam-packed dream. Bag of Skittles. I just love it. I want to unpack every bit of it because it's so much fun for me to tre treasure home with God, and it's a big word to the body of Christ. So um, when I, when I was wanted wanted to be married to this man, Matt means the gift of God. And I believe it is the people that are pressing in for their promises, that the promises that God has promised to them. That I, I don't think that there is a Christian, a seriously committed Christian right now, that's awake and alive with what God is doing, that isn't pressing in for some promise. And I would, I would venture to say plural, promises. Probably. And Matt means the gift of God. And when he chose us, I'm believe that that symbolizes the realization of our dreams come true that god has given us the breakthrough of into the dreams and destinies that we've been pushing in for and that god's been placing in our hearts and so that was huge and i was just filled with joy it was a last minute thing but i but but he picked it he picked us he, and my name catherine means pure so i believe it points to the bride mm -hmm. He picked the bride, and he and he gave us the gift of God, the gifts, the gifts that we've been believing him for. The promises. Yeah, the promises. So when I got pregnant after that, and I gave birth to this baby that could talk, and that is, it was so interesting to me because I didn't know what that meant at first, and then I watched the Dutch sheets, and I instantly, I knew, oh my goodness, he said. God is raising up no longer children of God, but sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. yeah, mature sons and daughters. Children, it's good to be a child of God. It's good to be saved. But at some point, you need to be a son and a daughter and a representative and an ambassador of Christ. And, and then it clicked to me. I've had so many dreams where I've been pregnant and the baby could walk and talk when I was born. And I wondered why. And he's saying that we're giving birth to the mature things of God. We're maturing in him. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, that was so pumped me up. Now, her name means, Riley, her name was Riley Bryn. Riley means courageous and valiant, and Bryn means hill. And when I said to the Lord, what does this mean? He said, it's time to take the hill. And I was like, whoa, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, capital hill. Now, if you're not from Canada, you may wonder what I'm talking about, but that's where our par parliament is situated, is, in, um, is on Capitol Hill. And it's also, I believe it's also a military term to take the hill. To take yeah, a, I believe so. Yeah, to take a certain piece of territory. And I don't mean like in come to Parliament Hill with guns blazing and shooting. We would not recommend that. No, we would not recommend that. But no. he is saying that that his ecclesia, his bride, who is newly married, 
and with the promise of God has had the promise of gifted to her, is now going to take the hill. Oh, yes, Lord. That's a good thing. Yes, I just saw I just saw a bolt of lightning when I said that. Power, 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 Lord. And it's time to take the hill and to realize that we are an ecclesia. We are not just a people who sit on church on Sunday mornings and do our two hour duty. We are a governing force of God. We are the government of God. And that is what he is birthing. And so when when I had this baby, the next part, I saw the woman, Michelle, and she was very, very um, depressed and she had not made it. Now, I'm going to say something that I have no understanding of or no intel of, very wise of me. But I asked the Lord, what does this mean? He said, Michelle Obama's plans will not succeed. And I thought, what plans were those? He didn't say, I, I didn't really care to ask because I didn't want to know. So I don't know what that's about, but her head was down and he said her plan will not succeed. So I'm just putting that out there. If that makes you mad, don't send me an email. I don't want to know about it. And if that resonates with you and you understand it, email me and fill me in. Because that's what the Lord told me. And so then the scene changed. And then we were determined to stay there. We were determined to stay there and listen to the final announcements. And I believe that speaks, speaks to the body of Christ being determined to hear the word of the Lord and see it fulfilled and not we are not leaving until we see God do what he said he was going to do that is really the only way you advance and prosper in the kingdom it really is mm -hmm. and as we waited and as the bleachers were working out as we waited they announced this Canadian goalie and I the goalie is the protector of the net and the Lord showed me that he's the net was the harvest of souls. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Woo! So Jesus, the goalie, yes. in my mind, that would represent Jesus protecting the harvest of Canada. He, he is saying, I'm protecting them. Do you think you can get a puck past Jesus? No, not if he doesn't want it to get past him. I don't think not. so. I don't think it's happening. You know, the, this oh, these Olympics took place in France. It makes me wonder if that represents um, a reconciliation between the French Canadians. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> good, good thinking. And so, as the goalie came skating there, so he, like Maggie said so well, he represents Jesus and he's protecting the net. That he's protecting the net of the harvest of souls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Protecting the net of the harvest of souls of young people in this nation is so awesome. And I have this inkling in my heart that this might play out in the physical through certain individuals that God has prepared, like Esther's and Daniel's for Canada. But I don't know exactly 100% who they are. I have some names, names in my head, but I won't say because I don't know good enough. But I think that that will, God will bring us some goalies, Canadian goalies. I like that. Yes, and they will help save the net, save the harvest. So awesome. And then at that point, and this, and then at that point, my mom was saying, "Now we can tell everyone that God really is good." Because, and I knew exactly what she meant in the dream. I knew she meant that God had done what he said he would do. So every good thing that God has told you about Canada or about your own nation, if you're from your own nation, he is good to his word. He is not a man that he should lie. We just give up. There's prophets in the in the Bible that waited 19 years. Joseph waited 19 years for his, his words to come true. 19 years. We can't handle it. We have to wait 19 months. So don't, you can't just pass my word saying, well, it's obviously not true. You need to dig in your heels and pull up your big girl panties. I just said that. You did just say that. And hang on to the word of God and stand on the word of God and let him do what he wants to do. 
so that you'll be there at the end to see it, to see it take place, to see it come, come to fruition. And that's when the man in the dream, he turned around, I know him from our church, he turned around and he said, he said this, this is so beautiful, he said, and now Canada is fully covered with water. And I knew in the dream he meant that Canada was covered with the glory of the Lord. As waters cover the sea. Yes. Now these were the Winter Olympics. God did not tell me if it was this year's Winter Olympics. I'm kind of assuming they are. They are taking place in February of 2024. And they are taking place in France. And that's why I'm pretty sure that the, he is referring to this winter and this timeline. So I'm naming names, Michelle, during dates, <laughs> all those things I'm not supposed to do. But um, there is Art Lucier and his team as in fighting for Battle for Canada for Quebec and to bring reconciliation between Quebec and the rest of Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's no coincidence that the Winter Olympics and this dream I had was in Paris, France. It's going to be held in Paris, France. There's no, that's no coincidence. So it's all part of the reconciliation. Canada, Canada cannot, cannot be divided and win. So that was my dream, you guys. It's kind it's, of a big dream. It's a biggie. It's a huge one, but I, I had to share it. And those of you who are, um, think like I think, or like to dive deep, or like that kind of like that, if you get extra insight on it, please email me, message me, pray about it, because it's a very, I think it's very what word do I use? It's a very forth-telling dream of what's going to take place and happen in Canada. Yeah, yeah. And how we need to respond and what where we need to be in, in this hour. Mm -hmm. This has been a month of visions. I have had visions and visions and visions and visions and visions. And visions? And yeah, I had some visions too. Yeah. Okay. Good. So... I was in worship one night, and these are all to encourage you guys. God chose me, I share with you, to encourage you. I saw ambulances driving away from Capitol Hill, tons of ambulances, and they were going nowhere. Like They weren't going to a hospital. They were just driving endlessly, it seemed. I was thinking, what in the world, Lord, I don't understand. And he said this, I am removing sick men with sick agendas sick men and women with sick agendas people from capitol hill from capitol hill people in power sick people in power that with sick agendas i'm removing them and i was like praise god so i share that with you that's such an awesome word i thank him so much for that because we've been praying for that that those that would not be that would not surrender to the lord and would be against his purposes that they he, they would be removed if they don't repent they would be removed so so that his glory can come and so that was an awesome vision that i had um i'm gonna keep right on going i'm going to go to the vision i'm deciding which business to visit, visions to share this last weekend there was a huge event in saskatoon some of you guys were there and it was called come together and what was the lovely lady that put it on? What was Charity. her name? I know Charity Gale was one of the worship leaders, but I don't remember who put um, it together. Oh, I know her name that was put it together. Ah, now it's... I totally know her name. Jeez, I didn't even see your face. Okay, anyways, this wonderful woman of God from Saskatoon put it on, and it was incredible. Tyrell Smith, Tyrell Smith. thank you. Yes, okay. And during that weekend... There were some of the most astounding pictures taken of sunsets in that area that a lady from Sask Saskatchewan sent me. And I want to sh screen share them with you. So let's hope that my technology gifts kick into action right about now. And I want to show them, just look at them. And then I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me.
Wow. Look at that. That is not photoshopped. That, these are pictures taken that weekend. That's unusual. Yeah, notice there's a, there's a theme here you'll notice. There's very distinct lines in the sunset. Very. Look at that. I've never seen anything like it. Look at, look at that. How's that possible? It's incredible. These are taken by different people at different times. Oh, we lost it. The stop sharing right there. You'll have to hit that. But I think it went away from those pictures. You'll have to hit stop sharing. Let me, let me see if I can get back those pictures. Okay, I showed you most of them, and you get the get the idea. Somehow I clicked X on, it's not on the wrong button, but you get the idea. Is that not incredible? Those those are lines like in the sand, like. And when she sent me that, I said, I believe that, and that happened the weekend they had this come together. They baptized a hundred and fifty people, and they just it was an incredible event with a huge impact. And those pictures were all taken over that weekend. And I said to that lady, the Lord is drawing a line in the sand. And he is saying, no more. He is drawing a line in the sand for the enemy. And he's saying, we're not going any further than this. That's what I shared with her. The very next day. Of course. Of course. Like that is just uncanny, those pictures. That's totally the Lord. The very next day. Lana Bowser released a word, and I'll read a small snippet. Suddenly I saw the hand of the Lord come down, and he drew a deep line in the sand, and his voice thundered, You will not be moved. I knew in that moment that the fortification, the maturing, the strengthening, the refreshment he was bringing into their lives in the place of intimacy would cause them to find a strength in Christ that they haven't lived in before, that no longer would be shaken or moved. The line in the sand was a monumental shift. The days of being moved and shaken by the tactics of the enemy are over as he brings a deep fortification within them as they live in the secret place close to him and deep in his word. Wow. Just, I don't even know what to say to that. Just wow. And that was, she released that the day after all these incredible pictures uh, i'll try to post them because like how you guys show a little short i had a few more pictures you saw them they were there but it was not a, in, that was a very i've insane. never seen anything like that i've never seen anything like that like it was a definite mm -hmm. line in the sky you know i have seen a picture similar to that where there was like a sun setting behind a mountain and then the mountain cast a shadow that made it look like there was lines but you could see the mountain casting the shadow but that was Oh, it was in Saskatchewan. There's no mountain there to cast no. a shadow through the sunset. And these are so many different pictures from different people. That's... And it gets better. Last night, Iris, my friend Iris, messaged me. She said, you got to listen to this. Charlie Sham just released the word. And he said that God is drawing a line in the sand of time and saying, saying to Satan, no further. He's, and I was like, you could be kidding. And he kept repeating it. He's drawing a line in the time of sand. He's drawing a line in the sand of time. So. Sand of time, yeah. Yeah, so I think we have a confirmation on that. Yeah, definitely. So praise God for that. And he's drawing a line. And you know, I know that a lot of the body of Christ, I certainly have been there where I've been drawing my own lines. And I know I've even talked about that with you. But you decide that what you believe and what you're going to stand for, no matter what comes against you. And that's and that's uh, you you have to do that. I love the part where she said this part. This is very key for where we are right now. The days of being moved and shaken by the tactics of the enemy are over, as he brings a deep fortification within them, as they live in the secret place close to him, and deep in his word. This last week was a week of incredible warfare, 
And I don't like to talk about that out in a lot, and you'll never hear me talk about it a lot, because I don't want to glorify the devil like he does. But last week was just incredible work for, for me, and it was for a lot of people. And I want to remind you that in, when you're in when you're in warfare, remind yourself that you are seated in Christ, mm -hmm. far above all principalities That's and right. all powers, and any name that can be named, all dominions, far above. And that is a huge key to coming through warfare, realizing and being reminded once again that he is under our feet, we are not under his feet. That's right. So that is huge as we go as you go forward when you face warfare of any kind, just to remember that we are seated in heavenly places. Now I want to talk about uh, a little bit something interesting that happened that I posted about so some of you guys were like, Oh, I remember her saying that. Do you remember the last live we had? You guys pointed out to the butterfly pills. Someone said, hey, your butterfly pills are upside down. And they were, both of them. I didn't notice. Was I on a few? No, I don't think so. I don't know myself. Or maybe mom, I don't know. I don't even remember. But the pills were upside down, both of them. And the funny thing was that Sean and I have put the pills up each our own and we both had put them upside down and we both didn't notice and i was like okay god what are you saying and i posted it and you guys how you i just so appreciate your revelation lines video because it was so exactly what i was getting when a butterfly comes out of its cocoon it's hanging upside down it is hallelujah and when a baby is about to be birthed its head is down. Yeah. If its head is not down, you're in trouble. That's true. And and it was as I researched it, it said that there the water the water in the butterfly gets the squished into its wings. And it's the it said when I was speaking to the Lord about it, he said it's the the waters of the Holy Spirit, the living water of the Holy Spirit is being forced into the every part of you as you emerge, as you come out of this metamorphosis. Head season. first. Head first. Dive right in. Yeah, so that was, I knew that was a word from the Lord because there was no way that Sean and I are that brilliant. That, aha, uh -huh, not brilliant. Put our pillows upside down like that. So it's a word to you, both of you, it's a word to uh, both of us, but it's a word to you. If you feel like your world is upside down, don't despair. You're in a birthing position. Mm -hmm. You're coming out head first. And you're coming out of your cocoon season. And the yeah. Lord isn't seeking it. that to me so clearly. Those of you who have been in the wilderness season, you know, and there's a lot of people in the wilderness season, and this is going to be a little harsh, but some of you... Can I say this, Lord? Some of us are going to be in there longer than others because we complain instead of decree that really makes all the difference doesn't it yep because if you have your eyes continually on the size of the giants instead of on the size of the grapes and you see the enemy as a giant and you see yourself the size of as a grasshopper and every time it looks like there's not provision, a.k.a. water, you start turning against God. I, what are you doing anyways, God? I thought you loved me. I thought you, until that's, uh, until that's beat out of you, you're going to be in those, you're going to be yeah. in the wilderness. Yeah. It's the refining process where you come out as pure gold. And that's the reason. It, and God wanted it to be a one-year trip. And it took 40 years. Isn't it even much it's much shorter than one year though isn't it was it a 40 day trip oh, yeah, i don't it's, even know it's a very short trip and it took 40 years way shorter than 40 years yes let's just put it like that we'll research it later on leave it to maybe the researcher see numbers come to my mind but if i don't see the actual number and have the 100 percent proof i don't like to say it yeah i hear you so i'm saying to you those of you who are in the wilderness it is imperative what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. 
it is imperative. The kingdom of God is voice activated. Did you know that? Yes, it is. So it is imperative. It's not just a. It's not just a. Oh well, God said through Catherine that we're coming out of the wilderness, so everyone's automatically coming out. It's just. I wish it worked like that. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? But we always work with God's word, and we partner with it, and we agree with it, and we align ourselves with His word, and we change where we need to change, and we bend, as Jonathan Edwards would pray in the Welsh Revival, we bend ourselves to His will, mm -hmm. and we let Him take the impurities out of us and the, the places in our hearts that would say, God, what are you doing anyways? It was better. It was better back in Egypt. It was better. With the leeks and onions. Yes. And... It was better before COVID. We could have just stayed there in our ignorance of what was really going on in the world. And the Lord has been saying to me lately, Kath, this is a time in the body of Christ where you must not look back to the good old days. He said, or you will become like a pillar of salt. And you will become the statue of the past. And that hit me hard when he said that. Because when you're sick, it's easy to think about the good old days. I believe that. It's easy to look at pictures and think, oh, I remember that, I remember that. We have to stop that. If you're in trauma, if you're in a hard situation, if, if you're thinking, oh, I remember, I remember when my kids still loved me and obeyed me, or I remember the good old days with this or that, or in my marriage or my finances, you have to stop because you cannot go forward looking in the rear view mirror. You will hit the ditch. Ain't that the truth. Ain't that the truth. It's as straight as I can put it. So we are coming out of the wilderness, and God wants us to come out of the wilderness, but we have to partner with him. And so that was so awesome. Um, I wanted to talk about the glory storm. I don't want, but... Okay, I'll nutshell quickly, because I need to go to something else. Um, there's a glory storm happening right now in the atmosphere, and it's twofold. It's Isaiah 61 and it's Psalm 18. I want you, can someone write that down in the comments so you can read it. If you can read it, Psalm 18 in the Passion, I prefer that. And Isaiah 61 in the Amplified is amazing. But the, it's, the glory storm is the vengeance of God against his enemies. And that's not people. Mm -hmm. We war not against flesh and blood. That's right. The, I asked God, what is this glory storm that I posted about on my timeline so you guys probably saw it. And he said, he said, it is a glory storm of my vengeance against my enemies. And so I thank God for that. And it's and it looks going to look messy. But if you know what he's doing, you don't have to be afraid, which is why it's so imperative to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to be listening to what he's saying. So that's a major nutshell, but dive deep into Isaiah 61. I love the... Can you read the second verse in Isaiah 61? Sure. Um, maybe not the second one, it's the third. If I can find Isaiah 61. I'm sure you will eventually. <laughs> eventually. Yeah, it is two. Two? Two, pro to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. That is the that is what this glory storm is about. He is coming to release his favor on his remnant and his ecclesia, those who have been standing and who have been faithful to him. And it's also a glory storm of judgment against his enemies. So hang on tight and buckle up. Hair spray your hair down if you need to and ride this thing up because it's for the glory of god mm -hmm. and he's and he's birthing his glorious pride hallelujah um um i'm gonna nutshell this one too how long have we been on here an hour and 16 we're doing good praise god well it depends on how long you've still got to go how many words i'm a good i'm a good nut you are a good nutsheller the one thing that God has been speaking to me, and I know we've been hearing this over and over and over, but this is amplifying, and you need to know it, and you'll see it in the next few in the next few months in a much greater way, but you'll see it in your own life too. Exposure. 
exposure of evil things. You're going to see it on the news and you're going to see it in your own life. God is going to expose things that are in, that were in your heart that you didn't know that were in there because he kindly wants them to remove them. They're mm -hmm. like thorns to you and he doesn't want them poking you and hurting you and hindering you from intimacy with him. So go to the Lord so that he doesn't have to send you some prophet to speak a corrective word to you in front of everybody else. God, God always gives you a chance to work with him first. Yeah, but if you just listen, you'll look for you to send you somebody else. And so this is a major season of um, exposure. It's uh, Daniel 2. I asked the Lord about this. And it's Daniel 2.22. Do you happen to have it? I do. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the, and the light dwells with him. So it's him shining his light in the darkness. Yeah. And that's going to be seen on a much broader scale. And that's something to rejoice in because it looks ugly and messy, but it's something to rejoice mm -hmm. in. So let God expose everything inside of you. Don't worry about other people and, and the government and the politics and what needs to be exposed in them. Worry about yourself. That's right, yeah. You're not going to stand before the government with, with just, you're not going to stand before God with just Trudeau. You're going to stand there before God by yourself. Yes. It's going to be you and him in your life. That's right. And so let God expose in your heart what needs to go so that we can go into fully into the promised land and fully, fully carry away what he has for us, the gifts and the promises he has for us. I had a very interesting experience that really, really highlighted this, that this is the season that this is taking place in. Um, I won't share names or anything like that. But I began to smell a certain smell that I had never smelled before. And I said, Lord, what is the smell? And I, 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 did, I hadn't smelled it before, as I said. But in my heart, when I asked him that, I, he answered me, it's this, I said, it's a demon, Lord. I know it is, but I don't know what it is. And he said, it's a demon of addiction. And I was like, it is? And he goes, yes, it is. And he later on confirmed to me that I was right through various ways that were not celebrated by other people involved. But God reveals things that need to be revealed. And there was a situation that needed to be revealed. And he revealed mm -hmm. it to me through allowing me to smell the demon of addiction. You can smell the presence of God and you can smell the presence of demons. And in this season, we need to be sharp and to be walking in the spirit and not in our heads. There's, oh, Jesus, I posted about that. Brian Simmons, sharp post of churches coming out of their head and into their spirits. We are spirits. Yes, we are. That's what we are. We aren't. We think of ourselves as flesh and blood people, but that's but not really what we are. Thinking of ourselves as flesh and blood people is extremely carnally minded extremely and it is extremely you, limiting that's, that's completely focused on who we are who we are carnally yes. this is your carnal body as lovely as it is yes. that's that's what this is yeah. that's on who you are it's and not. to focus on that as who you are is just focusing carnally and you are so limited you can't enter the realms of god you can't enter the, enter the realms of heaven you can't have su supernatural experiences supernatural provision mm -hmm. you can't hear from god because you're carnal it says it's, it says those things are foolish to the carnal man. He doesn't understand them. So yeah. it's so 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 important to spend time with the Lord and let Him sharpen sharpen your your um, discernment and your spiritual understanding mm -hmm. that you can that when things are around you like that that you can smell things and see things, hear things, and know things and take care of them in the spirit realm. There's one thing I had on my list that I'm not going to share today because I know I'm not, I'm, I looked at it and I know I'm not supposed to, I'm supposed to share with my mom. Yes. Are you agree? I, can, I agree. Yeah. We had a pastor's refresh weekend that our lovely people sent us on and we really encountered the Lord there and he released some pretty powerful things to us. 
and Satan made that incredibly obvious to us because as soon as we we hadn't even left the camp, campground yet, we were preparing to leave, and all hell started to break loose. And I was like, wow, don't you make things obvious. Way to put them all in suspense. Now wait, can you make them wait so you can go live with mom? So I'm going to come on live with mom because it's, not, it's something that God has released to to the body of Christ and needs to be released. So I know that you guys love her. Everybody loves her. So I'm hoping to come on as soon for maybe even this week. We'll see what happens. And so the last thing I will release, then I'll let you guys go on and enjoy the rest of your Sunday, is God has been speaking to me about Pride Month. And he is saying, it is my Pride Month, and he's very happy about it. And I was like, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, what is a pride? And I and I, I, I thought, it's not what the world thinks it is. So I'm thinking here, Lord. And I saw a group of female lions, lionesses. That's said, a much better pride. I like it. He said, it is my pride month. It is my month for women to rise up in their calling, to rise up against what's mm -hmm. rising up against them, to rise up and lift up their voice and speak yes. and declare and decree. If you are a prophet, then prophesy. Or if you have a prophetic gift, then prophesy. A prophetic anointing, whatever it is, do it. If you're an encourager, encourage. Mm -hmm. If you're a giver, then give. But do it. He's, I just, I love, I, it actually just totally tickled my heart when he said that this is my pride month. And I was like, oh yeah, I know what the world's saying about that. And he said, no, this is my pride month. I'm raising up my lionesses. Pride of Lions. Yes, his pride. That's much better. I like that. I heaven, love that. You know, heaven always has the flip side of it, the good side. And the enemy likes to make a counterfeit. Always, every yeah. single time. And so I want to speak to the lionesses on here. It is to, it's time for you to rise up. It's time for you to take take what God has given you. And, and like Donna was just commenting here, she says... Um, the pride of lions roar exactly let out your roar it's time to decree and declare and mm -hmm. not to complain because it was honestly unbelief and complaining that kept the israelites in the in their wilderness that kept them in their cocoon and i don't want to stay in there no 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 jesus so let out your roar you lionesses because this is your pride month that's right. Get together with your fellow lionesses and roar together. And decree together and worship together and praise together. Yeah. The Lord showed me in one of the most, I won't tell you now because it's too long, but I've shared it before a long time ago, one of the most vivid, incredible dreams I have ever had in my life. In the dream, I had several open visions. I don't know how that works, but it works. And the Lord showed me that he was going to raise up his women. He called them his ladies of liberty. And then he was going to raise up his Noahs, his preachers of righteousness. And he said, I'm going to raise up the women and then I'm going to raise up the men. And we are there now with the women. Mm -hmm. Yep. 100%. He is raising up the women. I've yep. been so blessed to see so many pro prophetic voices saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been so incredible. Even Jeremiah Johnson's work in the, be in the beginning of the year. You need to check that out. Go mm -hmm. on YouTube, Jeremiah Johnson. Credit word for women for 2023 is so awesome that he said God is calling up women in this hour. And so that is huge for us right now, yeah. especially in God's pride month of his lionesses. Yes. And just letting out your roar and yeah, letting out your roar. I don't know if I can add if I, if I didn't have such a scratchy throat, I would attempt to roar. I actually have a friend. Okay, this is super funny. Because I have a friend in the ministry. That when the Holy Spirit comes really strongly on him, he roars. And this is so funny. I won't tell his name because I didn't ask his permission. One time he was in the line hop at Tim Hortons. And he was praying under his breath. And <laughs> the Holy Spirit came up on him and he started roaring. <laughs> Into Hortons. Wow. He started roaring in the lineup. <laughs> That's amazing. 
you would think I've been roaring because of my scratchy voice. But uh, that I, I don't suggest you go roar in the Tim Hortons lineup. I just thought that was the funniest. <laughs> you laughed so hard when you told us that story. That is funny. But let out your roar. Find, yes. Find out what it is and let it out with yes. all your heart. Because God said that so proudly. This is my pride month. My lionesses are going to arise. Praise God! Yes. So we did it, Maggie. We did it. We were sli job. slightly frazzled. Slightly. And, and slightly shaky. Not you. You did pretty good with the tremors. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll pass some of that on to you. I would appreciate it. Yeah. So I want to say to you, you are coming out of where you are in. Mm -hmm. And we are we are one in Christ. Me and Maggie have got your back. I, I, I speak for Maggie. Hopefully she's okay with this. I'm okay with it if it's you. But I say say this, if you need prayer or if you need support of any kind, contact us. Mm -hmm. I Sometimes I have people that contact me and as soon as I start counseling them, then they make excuses. So if you're, they, oh, but I can't do that. I'm not like that. If you're one of those people, then probably don't contact us. We love you anyways. But if you want someone to stand with you and to fight with you and to ask the Lord for truth for you, contact us, right? Yes. Yeah. Because we want to stand together with you guys and fight with you and fight for you. Because we are coming, we are coming into this out of this wilderness season, and I'm so pumped about that. Mm -hmm. So we love you. Do you have anything else to say, Maggie? No. Nope. I love you and the people. I love you and the people. You better reiterate that before you question my love for people. I did that once. You did. Uh, on a live, right? <laughs> on a live, yes. It was very amusing. Oh my gosh, I have been so blessed this month. Um, I wanted to say with the prophetic calendar, uh, le this last month of May on the prophetic calendar has been mind boggling. Oh my gosh. So okay. crazy. May? Yes. Okay. So crazy. And now we have crossed into June and God knows exactly what he's doing. It's very interesting how he has us all lined up. Let me show you june here before we sign off for those of you who don't have the prophetic calendar you're missing out same you want to hold it what does it say a surge of glory rising over the nations look for miraculous signs and wonders isaiah 60 verses 1 to 5 Hallelujah. That's a beautiful, beautiful scene. Now it's taking in Norway house with yeah. my own my own very own camera. It's amazing. So we thank you, God, for these prophetic words. God, we thank you for all the visions that you've released. The crazy dream that you released, God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for this Facebook family, these precious ones. I trust that you've spoken to every single one of them, Lord. And I release a blessing right now in the name of Jesus. I release a blessing over every single viewer and over every single person on the replay. Mm -hmm. I release a blessing over you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you prosper. And what's uh, third John 2? Beloved, may you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yes. May you say it again. Beloved, may you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Yes. That is our wish for you. Yes. So we bless you with that, and I will see you shortly. I will come back on with Mom to release what the Lord showed us, as though it's happening in the spiritual realm. And then I will be coming on with Calendar Club, and I'm very excited about that as well. Uh, our last Calendar Club was off the ch chain. It was, ah, it was so good. So I love you guys. God bless you. Have a good night. Have, have a great night. And don't forget... The camels are coming. Indeed they are. Position your heart to prosper. Yes. Amen. Amen.